Today I want to show you how to disassemble the Samsung front load dryer and most of the components. I bought it from a yard sale so it's not really in the best shape though. I am going to have other videos out on testing the components to see if they're bad so make sure to subscribe to see those videos and let's get started. The first thing that you'll want to do is remove any screws from the top rear of the dryer. Usually there are Phillips head screws here but I think someone messed this unit up in the past and replaced it with a different type of screw. You can then remove the top of the dryer lid by pulling to the back of the dryer and this will expose the dryer drum for access as well as inspection. To remove the control board there are three screws that need removed to access the housing but one of these was missing from our dryer for some reason. Once you remove the screws you can flip the control board housing around and remove the wires if you want to fully remove the board but make sure to take a picture on where they all go. On most newer Samsung dryers though, you can keep the control board in place if you simply want to access the other parts of the dryer like the front bulkhead and anything underneath like the heat. Depending on the dryer, there may be screws holding in the plastic panel that need removed. Once these screws are removed from the plastic panel, you can use a flat bladed screwdriver to gently pry up the retention tabs from the plastic housing facade and then roll the console interface forward. This should expose the wiring harnesses that are left to keep the console in place. On my dryer here, there are two wire harnesses that keep the control interface connected to the dryer. You'll want to unplug both of these harnesses, then roll the console forward to nearly a 90 degree angle, then pull it out as there are tension tabs that keep the console attached to the dryer. On a select few Samsung dryers, you could find screws on the front underneath that hold the front of the unit in place, but they are not on this dryer, just as a note. We now need to open up the dryer door and remove two screws just below the opening of the dryer drum. It is possible that your Samsung dryer could have a slightly different orientation, but these were the only two screws on this model holding the front of the dryer in place, behind the door at least. There are four screws holding on the last of the dryer door frame to the bulkhead. We'll need to remove these four screws, two on each side, to get the dryer door frame off. There are also then finally two tabs that need pushed in to release the door to allow us to pull it forward, then up and out. When you have the dryer door separate though from the housing, you need to make sure to remove the wire harness from the door switch, which will then let us remove the door entirely. There's one final wire harness that needs removed for the door light switch, so we can then remove the top metal bracket on the dryer. The top bracket is held in by four screws, and there are also some small metal fingers on each side that go into the dryer frame as well, but it's pretty easy to remove all this once the screws are out. When you can remove the bracket, you're also going to want to make sure that the wire harness is removed from the bulkhead and its retention tabs before we move on to the bulkhead itself. This is what the bulkhead looks like and there are four screws holding it onto the dryer frame. The blower housing piece has two screws holding it onto the bulkhead and three screws holding it on the blower housing. Depending on if you want to remove it all together or separate pieces is up to you but just make sure though to separate the moisture wire harness sensor before you try to take the bulkhead off. Now I'm going to take off all the screws remaining on the front of the dryer, the four screws on the bulkhead, the two between the filter housing and the bulkhead, and then the three screws to the blower housing and filter. You're going to need to take off the blower screws and bulkhead screws to remove the front at a minimum. The two between the filter and blower housings are not needed at this stage, but I did it anyway. When all the screws are removed, the bulkhead has these nice little tabs on the sides of the frames that it rests on. You'll need to lift up on the bulkhead before you remove it, and these tabs do make it quite easy to take off and put back on as well. When removing the idler pulley, you'll have to feel for it and release the tension by moving the pulley counterclockwise from your perspective with one hand, then using the other hand to move the belt back off track either with the pulley or the motor housing. With the idler pulley loosened up and out of the way, we can now take the belt on the drum and use it to pull the tub up and out of the way. Once you do this, this will give you access to every single part of the dryer that you'd need to look at, inspect, and repair as needed. This dryer is definitely dirty on the inside, so make sure you clean yours when you open it up, as lint and other buildups can cause major problems. Here's a quick explanation on what's inside the dryer in terms of components. The heating element canister is on the right side, which controls heat. The blower housing moves heat through the dryer and can get clogged or damaged, causing noise or it not running. The motor assembly handles the dryer running, and if it gets damaged, it will, simply will not run. There are two sensors on the blower housing, one maintains temperatures, and the other is a fail-safe if the dryer overheats. The idler pulley helps roll the belt and drum in unison, and Samsung dryers are very notorious for this going bad and being damaged. 
Finally, at the back of the dryer, we have the steam port, as well as the bulkhead and two rollers with wheels that handle the drum turning. To remove the heater can, you'll simply remove the one screw that holds the metal leg and the heater can together, and then you'll remove the wires going to the heater can that are not attached to the sensors, which is the red wire and blue wire on the harness trunk. When you remove the wires and screw, you can simply pull the canister out at this point. If you need to replace the entire heater system, you can always buy the canister pre-assembled with the sensors, and I do have a link for it in the description. Otherwise, here's how you take the canister apart. Firstly, we want to remove the sensors on the element canister, and there's two screws on each sensor holding them in place on the housing. Once the sensors have been fully removed, we then want to remove all the screws holding the canister together. There should be approximately six Phillips head screws holding the canister together. And then once you have them all removed, you can open the top of the canister, revealing the electric heating element underneath. The element wire connectors have two tiny tabs, one on each side that are bent at an angle to keep the connectors in the ceramic block. You're going to need pliers to pinch and move these tabs to be flush with the connectors so you can remove the old element wire from the heater can. With the connectors out of the ceramic holders, you can now pull the element out and it's been completely and fully disassembled. You can now take out a new element and install it. Today I'm using an ERP brand element to install back into this heater can and I have a link for it in the description if you need to buy one. You'll want to wear at least one glove in doing this install because you do not want your hands to touch the heater coil. This could get sweat or oil onto the element and it could make it burn up and degrade faster. You'll simply route the two wire connectors back into the ceramic connector harness making sure that they are pushed in all the way with your gloved hand. You'll then take your pliers and bend the connector tabs between 50 and 90 degrees which is enough to keep them in place and secure. The connectors are firmly in place now, and this means that we have to make sure that the element lines up properly with the screw holes. There are small indents on the heater can for it to fit in line properly. On this part, I'll be honest, lining up the screws is not the easiest thing, as the heater can always seems to want to bulge out on the sides. The best or easiest way to do this is to try to make sure that at least one screw hole lines up properly between the upper half of the canister the heating element, and the lower half of the canister. Once you sink the very first Phillips head screw into the hole, the rest seems to come more easily, but you may have to press against the canister sides to get them to line up properly. This is a very slow task, and it took me about four to five minutes to get the whole can assembled right in real time. I think the end result though looks really nice and clean and it definitely looks much better. The hard part on this is over and now we just have to reinstall the thermal fuse and thermostat to the proper places on the heating element canister. To reinstall the canister, we simply need to slot it into the back of the tabs on the rear bulkhead and then set it on the canister stool. There is a small slot on the stool that a finger of the canister will need to set on and into before you put the single Phillips head screw back into the canister stool to secure it. When you've done this, reinstall the red and blue wires going to the element canister and the disassembly and reassembly is all completed. Now we are going to work on the motor and blower housing. There's a wire harness that connects to the motor that needs removed, and this one is somewhat difficult to film on camera, but there are retention clips on the top and bottom of the motor harness that need pressed in to remove it fully. Going to the back of the dryer, there are three to four screws on the metal panel that secure the dryer vent tube to the blower housing. These all need unscrewed to where you can pull the tube out. Some Samsung dryers do not have the metal panel though, and it's merely just the tube. This area, if it has the sheet, is a fantastic way to get inside your dryer without disassembling it. It's a good, sneaky way to clean the inside of the unit easily or change some certain components. The metal is sharp though, so be careful. To remove the motor and blower housing assembly, there are three screws on this type of blower housing where the circles are on the screen. The ones near the chassis were rather difficult to remove due to the room constraints. There's also a wire harness connector at the rear of the motor for this centrifugal switch and that needs removed simply by pulling it out. When you have the screws and harness removed, you just need to push the motor block to the right and the entire motor and blower assembly comes out as one easy but heavy piece. With the motor now on my tool cart, there's a plastic collar on the blower housing that needs removed to access the blower. Simply use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove all the needed screws and this plastic collar will be removed easily. You'll need to use a wrench or similar device to hold the motor's belt nut in place so you can then use a 17 or 18 millimeter socket wrench to unscrew the blower nut. This blower nut screw is countersunk so you need to turn it clockwise to remove it from the front and it's not that easy to do in most circumstances. 
pieces. Of course, I loosened it up off camera to make this look easier than it really is. Now to the worst part. Chances are your blower housing doesn't really want to come off. In most cases, like this one, you can simply pull and pull and it won't come off. If you're lucky, it will come off and you can then release the clips on the front and rear of the dryer motor and you can then take the motor out reseat a new one and then it's fully disassembled. Otherwise though you'll need to cut it out with a one inch hole saw or heat the metal shaft with a torch of some sort to weaken the connection. Another thing you could do is just buy the whole motor and blower housing assembly together which is more expensive but most techs do this because it's much quicker than having to hack the blower housing apart. Putting the motor and blower housing back into place is no different than taking it out, as you'll slide the motor back into place, reinstalling the thermistor, cutoff, and belt switch. You can then reinstall the ductwork tubing and the motor housing all back together, and now the motor housing is all back together other than the blower nut and plastic collar, which I wasn't able to film at this time. Now, Let's talk about removing the bulkhead that holds on the two rear roller wheels which turn the drum. To remove this huge piece, we want to first remove the heat canister by removing the one retention screw that holds it on the front, then removing the two wires that attach to the canister from the wire harness. We can then remove the canister which is attached to the rear of the bulkhead. Then we need to remove the water line to the steam port which has a small blue clip on it that needs removed with needle nose pliers. When you have this off you can press in on the collar that is holding the water line on and then pull off the water line to finally remove it. This is kind of hard to do on camera but off camera isn't too hard with two hands. On this type of dryer there are six screws on the back of the unit that need taken out. This holds the bulkhead onto the chassis. It is possible that your model dryer could have more screws holding the bulkhead on however. The bulkhead is held up by two tabs and at this point you only need to lift up and the entire bulkhead system will come out entirely. To remove the rollers on the bulkhead you're going to need an 8mm screwdriver and either a 17 or 18mm socket wrench depending on the model. These are used in tandem to remove the roller shaft and it's quite difficult to get it to unscrew this way. It's best to flip the bulkhead on its back and use the 8mm wrench to secure the roller in place while using the ratchet or larger wrench to provide torque to remove the large nut. And also note the orientation of the two large washers when you finally get the roller off. Most kits will give you the roller and metal shaft together but not these large washers and if you need it I do have a link to the four roller kit in the description if by chance you need one. Installing the new roller shaft is pretty easy as you just place the washer onto the bulkhead then the big screw on top. Then you put the other washer on the brand new roller shaft and screw them back together. I hand tightened this roller shaft then use the socket wrench and 8mm wrench to make sure it was well tightened. These rollers tend to degrade at different rates so it's usually good to go ahead and replace all of them at the same time including the ones on the front bulkhead as well. To reinstall the bulkhead you'll need to make sure that it slides into and rests on the two tabs at the top of the chassis and this part goes pretty easily. You can then reinsert the water line into the steam port and put the blue clip back in place. Once you have this all in place you can then get to reattach the six screws on the rear of the unit to secure the bulkhead fully back in place. To reinstall the canister we simply need to slot it into the back of the tabs on the rear bulkhead and then set it on the canister stool. There is a small slot on the stool that a finger of the canister will need to set on and into before you put the single Phillips head screw back into the canister stool to secure it. When you've done this, reinstall the red and blue wires going to the element canister and the disassembly and reassembly is all completed. We're now reassembling the dryer and to do that we first want to put the drum back into place by using the rear belt to pull the drum back onto the bulkhead and then put it in between the circular rear bulkhead and the roller wheels which will secure it in place at least at the rear. To put the belt back into place, you'll put the belt on the motor's belt pulley, then pull the idler back until it provides tension to secure the belt. This isn't always easy and it does require a bit of strength in both of your hands. Now it's time to put the front bulkhead back on. The key here is to make sure that the bulkhead rests on the four tabs that are on each side of the chassis. The sides may have bowed slightly so it's possible that you could press in on the side walls of the dryer to get these tabs to slot into place properly. Also, when you're done with that, don't forget to install the moisture sensor. Next, we are reinstalling the screws to the bulkhead as well as the blower cover. 
depending on if you kept the blower cover on or not will change the number of screws you need to install. I would suggest installing the cover onto the bulkhead first as installing them individually was a little bit more time consuming. Before reinstalling the top bracket, you'll want to route the wire harness through the two plastic tabs on the bulkhead. Once you do this, you'll secure the metal bracket into place and reinstall four screws. But don't make the same mistake I did on the video and try to install the harness after the top bracket because there usually is not enough clearance or room to do this. The door light harness is next and then we can reattach the front of the dryer. Make sure to install the door switch harness before putting the front on. The front slots into the bottom fingers of the dryer and then the door pivots on this into two metal retaining clips. These clips may have been deformed when you took the dryer door off so you may need to use a screwdriver to pull them up to retain the door. Additionally, there are four screws on the top front of the dryer door that need secured in place. Once you have those four screws installed, you'll then finally reinstall two screws inside the door on the dryer lint filter and you're all done with the front door. Depending on model, there's a plastic retainer at the top of the metal bracket I snapped into place. Then the control console can be reinstalled by slotting it into the holes at the dryer door and then pivoting it up. Make sure to connect any wire harnesses on the console and your dryer is almost back together once there's two more screws installed on this console. The last two needed things are to put the control board back in place, make sure all the wires are back in place, and secure it to the chassis. Now this step really isn't needed on the vast majority of the Samsung dryers because you can avoid touching the control board and just go straight to harness disconnect closer to the control interface. But just in case, make sure all the wires go back as needed. After that, you're going to put the dryer control top back on and secure it in place. I appreciate you watching this video. Make sure to look in the description for some of the parts we replaced if you need them. And make sure to subscribe because I am doing a lot more Samsung dryer videos and this is the first part of them. Have a great day.